Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about how to use insert record set in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So what is insert record set? Insert record set is a keyword that you can use as part of the SQL-esque type language within X++ and it allows you to uh, insert many records um, at once very, very quickly. A uh, conventional insert method call on a table buffer is just gonna only insert one statement or one record into the database. And even if you put a while select loop around that insert statement, each one of those calls takes time. It takes time to generate a SQL call. It takes time to then call the SQL database, insert the record, come back to um, the code and the system, then do that all over again. And if you've got a lot of records that you're looping through as part of a while select statement, th that can be really inefficient. And so that is where we use insert record set. So let's uh, break that down a little bit. Let's look at some examples. So first of all, um, if you haven't looked at my article on how to insert data in 365 and D365, I recommend you start there. Essentially, um, it's going to explain what a table buffer is. It explains how we can populate that table buffer, um, what mandatory fields are, and then finally that we can call this insert method on the table buffer. What's going to happen behind the scenes is the system's going to generate some T-SQL code um, such as just an insert statement and insert these particular values in this table um, just individually. And that's great. We use that all the time in X++. That's a really valuable thing. But then we might need to get a little further. We may have a bunch of records that we need to loop through. So let's actually look at an example. If I go over to this new runnable class and job that I created, um, it looks like this. I've got a main method and then essentially uh, a very simple um, few lines of code in here. I've got a while select statement where I am looping through this table called MCR sales stats cuss table. And then I've even got a condition. I'm going to only look at it where order frequency is greater than zero. This is a table that is part of the base product, so you can follow along um, as well. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking each value that is in this table buffer across a variety of different columns and I'm copying it over to a new table buffer called MCR cusp RFM score. I set all those values and then finally I call the insert method. The thing is with this approach each time I call the insert method the system's going to generate some SQL code. It's going to call a SQL database, insert that record, then come back to the system, go through this loop again, populate it over and over again. And so we've got a lot of back and forth trips between the system and the SQL database. We've got a lot of generating of these SQL statements and compiling those each time. And in the end, the performance of this really suffers. So um, whenever you've got a while select statement like this, um, you may find it easier to write it this way first but then take a step back and consider whether this could be rewritten as an insert record set statement. And we'll look at that um, here next. So in an insert record set statement, um, we essentially select many records from a source table and we are then inserting them into a destination table. And um, essentially, if we've got a while select loop and there's a bunch of if statements, some complex logic, um, data that's being pulled from a bunch of different tables, then calling insert record sets not really gonna be helpful. If, however, it is pretty straightforward like this, where it's pretty much all from a single source table, copied over to a destination table, then an insert record set can be really helpful. So let's look at how this same method could be written as an insert record set. So I'm gonna go over to this other runnable class and job that I wrote. It's got a main method, the same few variables that I've set up. 
and then now I've got an insert record set. And let's break down what an insert record set really is. There's really three parts of it, and whether you go from the top down or honestly the bottom up, it kind of depends on how you want to think about it. But let's start from the top um, down. We're going to use the keyword called insert underscore record set. This is a little different. It doesn't exactly match T-SQL, um, but that's what the keyword is in X++. This basically says we're about to insert one or many records, um, or really zero to many records into a destination table. The next thing we need to do is provide a table buffer that relates to the table we want to insert. So in this case, we're going to insert into the table MCR cust RFM score. We've got a table buffer named the same thing. We're going to use that table buffer name right here, not, a, not the actual name of the table, but the table buffer. So that's kind of step one. Step two is we need to actually list out all of the columns we are planning to populate when we're inserting the table and list them in order. So we use this parentheses first. It's a little different than most of your other select statements. Then we list out each column that we want to populate. We don't have to populate every column in the table. Um, we really only have to populate the ones that are mandatory and any others that um, we want for the purposes of uh, this code. So now we've listed out all of the columns. We're going to end it with a um, close um, uh, parentheses right here. Then the third step is we need a select statement that retrieves data from a source table um, for copying it into this destination table. So here we've got a select statement. We're going to uh, select all these fields from our source table, which is the MCR sales stats cust table. And we can still have any conditions we want. We could actually have joins as well to reduce the data that's in this table. We can say where MCR sales stats cus table dot order frequency is greater than zero. The one other piece that's required here is um, I need to actually list out all of the columns. The number of columns in this table might not exactly match the columns that are in this table and they might not appear in the same order. So we need to tell the system what order of fields we are selecting, what the names are, and they are going to correspond to what gets inserted into the destination table. So here I can see the stat last order date, that is that value for each one of these records that I'm selecting is going to go into this column here, last order date. And then order frequency is going to go into order frequency. Average invoice amount is going to go into this one. So they may be named the same, they may not be. Um, but you can then kind of set that up and just make sure that uh, you put them in the same order and that you have the same number of columns that you're selecting as you're inserting. And so that's it. In the end, you can notice we've got a semicolon at the end. This is a single select statement and this gets compiled or, um, by the system, generated into a SQL statement. It ends up um, creating an insert uh, T SQL statement on the SQL database if you're familiar with that language and it uh, tells the system to select all these rows you know whether it's zero or, or a million rows from this table and insert them into this table and because it does this all as a single uh, statement in X++ and it can convert it into a single select uh, SQL statement um, in the SQL language, it means the system is able to do this way, way, way faster. It still has to do the inserting of all of these, but it doesn't have to wait as the back and forth communication occurs like it would with a while select statement where you know each loop through is a new SQL statement. Here it's just one. It tells the system to do all the work it needs to, and then once it's finished, it comes back um, to our X++ system and continues on. So a really efficient way of inserting data, um, especially when you're copying data. So let's talk through a couple more things that are helpful to know when writing insert record sets. 
So one thing is you can actually use variables. Maybe you've got some fields that you want to populate in the destination table that don't exist in your source table, but you'd like to populate them with the same value. You can actually do that, and we're doing that here. So here I am populating a variable called test, and then I'm using that variable in my select statement. So it looks like this is a field in MCR sales stats cuss table. It's not actually, but the system knows, oh, this is a variable. So take this value and then store it into the corresponding field in the destination table um, every single time. So essentially every record that gets inserted into this table is going to have the value test in this column RS RFM definition name. So this is really helpful because there's a lot of scenarios where you may need to do this. Similarly, we can also have a different kind of variable. Here, I created a variable called effective date, and this is getting the system date in the user's preferred time zone. And then I'm putting that value in here as well. This is a variable, and then this is gonna go into the effective date column of my destination table. Um, so this can be really helpful when maybe you don't have the data again in your source table or you want to change what it is to um, you know, record this instance, record when this happened. Um, so it's just important to note that each one of these columns need to be of the same data type. Um, in the source as the destination. So these are reels, um, you know, these are dates, this one's a string. They have to be the same type otherwise, or the same base type, I should say, um, or otherwise it's not gonna work. Um, additionally, you can't just use a like str type string. You need to use an extended data type that has, that, that, that's bounded. And what that means is that it has a maximum string length, whereas technically str, you can have as long a string as possible. The system does not like that. So you really need to use um, an extended data type with a maximum string length, and then um, you can put that in your call right here. All right, um, so those are the main things. We actually, if you wanna see a, uh, an example in the system, you can go over to the table um, called MCR CUST RFM score. Um, and actually, I think it's the class um, MCR RFM. So if you go to this class within the base system, you can search for it in the application explorer and you go to the save customer RFM history, you can see basically this almost the same method that we just created. The system is taking a backup of um, data in this table and copying it over to this table. If you wanna find a lot more examples, you can actually use like a tool like File Locator Pro um, let me pull this down if I can here, see the top. Um, and then you can point it at the K drive, AOS services, packages, local directory of um, your development box, and then do a search for something like insert underscore record set, or in this case, I even search for not exist join. And this will return lots of different examples that you can then go back in Visual Studio, search and see many, many other examples of the use of an insert record set. One more point um, is it's common to use a non exist join in an insert record set. So let me show you that real quick. Let me zoom out just a little bit here. So in the table document event log, here is another example. We can see our insert record set, the name of our table buffer, our list of all our fields, and then our select statement. Well, as I said before, you don't just have to have a select statement. You can use where clauses, you can use joins, and one common use, especially for insert record sets, is to use a non-exist join, and you can actually join on the same, it needs to be a different table buffer name, but it's the same root table 
as this table here. So event log is actually do document event log. This one is also the document event log. But by doing a non-exist join we're, and joining back to the original um, table, we can essentially say only insert records that don't already exist in this table. So one of the challenges with insert record sets is you might accidentally insert duplicate data if you run it more than once, but by using a non-exist join back on your destination table, you can effectively say, hey, only copy in data that does not already exist. And you can join on the primary key to ensure um, that you don't have duplicates in that area. So I wanted to point that out as that's just a very common use of, um, it, it, we regularly use non-exist in insert record set. Okay, lastly, I'll point you to the, um, X plus plus or, or the Microsoft documentation. First, there's the how to write an X plus plus select statement. Feel free to check that out if you're having trouble writing your select statement. And then there is an insert underscore record set Microsoft documentation where they kind of show some of the similar examples and syntax of um, what we looked at of where you may take a while select statement and convert it into an insert record set. And then if you're really curious, you can look at the insert T SQL or transaction uh, SQL statement. This is what gets generated on the SQL database um, based on this insert record set. Um, you don't really need to know this, but if you're extra curious why you're gaining these performance, uh, you can check that out. So again, kind of to summarize, insert record set statements are going to perform way faster than just doing a while select and insert call, um, especially when you've got a lot of records. Um, you, they can't always be used. It kind of depends on what your while select statement looks like. But if it's a very basic while select with not um, a lot of if statements or it's not pulling from a variety of different tables, definitely consider converting those into an insert record set. Um, they will run a whole lot faster. Okay, thank you so much. Hopefully you learned something new today. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.